the hope of our very own Elder David Gillespie Sr. Come on, let's give God praise in this house. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in you. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Come on, one more time. Clap those hands. And give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for our life well lived. We thank God for a servant that has gone on to be with the Lord. And we give God praise. And we give God glory. And we give God honor. For He's worthy. Even in our sadness, he's worthy. Our hearts are heavy, but he's still worthy. Our hearts are broken, but he's still worthy. Hallelujah.
somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. If you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength, as the word of the Lord says, I need you to give God a praise for the next 60 seconds. Beat for it. Clap for it. Sing for it. Come on, Wells Cathedral. Elder Gillespie was a praiser. Come on. Give God praise. The joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now listen, I just want to remind you that this is not a funeral. This, this is a homegoing celebration and not just that we're here to celebrate a servant of the Lord and around this time I could remember when I was a little kid sitting where Mother Gillespie is sitting right now just about every Sunday Elder Gillespie would sit right where supervisors sitting and when it was time to give God praise, he, he'll start moving his, start moving his shoulders. And by the time he got happy, he'll be over there by the other choir stand by the Leslie. Because he knew what God brought him out of. He will tell you the story of his past and then he'll say that God has been good to me so I don't know about you we didn't come for a dry service I just need about 10 people for Wells Cathedral that knew how Elder Gillespie used to praise God to give God praise for the next minute and give God praise for the life that he lived do I have about five to ten people that will help the family celebrate? Do I have about five to ten people that can give God praise for the things that God has done in his life? Come on. We don't have that much time, so don't play with it. Come on. Give God praise. surgeries he's with Jesus now celebrate Woo. my God come on just a few more seconds Eric Gillespie will run around the church hallelujah All right, hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Appraiser, despite of everything that he has gone through in his life, 
uh, there was always a praise in Elder's heart. He always had a spirit of worship. And we give God praise. Come on, clap those hands one more time. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have our reflections. Amen. We're going to have our reflection in this order. To represent Wells Cathedral, Dr. Sarah Brown, followed by Dr. Brown, we will have Pastor James Shaw, followed by Denise Shaw, to represent the Vulcan pioneers, Tyler, excuse me if I don't uh, pronounce his name correctly, Hussein. Then we will have reflections from Jamar Gillespie, Greg Gillespie, David Gillespie Jr., and followed by him, we will have reflections from Captain, Captain, <clears throat> Captain Edwards from the North Fire Department. And we uh, ask you to uh, kindly hold your remarks to two minutes in respect of everyone uh, that will be having reflections. Let's receive them at this order. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. We bring you greetings uh, from Shiloh Temple here in the beautiful city of Newark, New Jersey. Amen. We just thank God. Amen. Uh, I just thank God for my brother. And I was just reflecting uh, uh, on just uh, so many of the things of which that we dealt with, gone through, even re as a recent. Uh, before I share that with you, I'd like to give honor amen, to our Lord and Savior. Give honor to the shepherd of this house to all the clergy, to all the saints and friends, all the family, amen, even, at a, even in a time such as this, amen, we're still grateful to God 
Amen. Because we serve a God that does not make no mistakes. Amen. And this is a way in which we all have to pass through. I was just thinking about how uh, Earl was dealing with challenges uh, with his health over the past few years. And even though he was dealing with the challenges with health, he never had a challenge with the spirit of the Lord which dwelt on the inside of him. Amen. Amen. And we thank God that this, this was a man of God that loved the Lord. Amen. And every time we talked, we talked about the goodness of Jesus. Over the past couple of months, uh, Earl and Levine would come over to our house and uh, they, they would stay for hours on end. <laughs> and and, and uh, they, they were big fans of watching uh, re, uh, reruns of In Heat of the Night. You know, I, I ain't a, I'm not a big television person, but I would let them sit down, her, him and the, uh, Levine and my wife, and they would just sit down, down in the living room and just enjoy themselves uh, watching episode after episode. Even though they watched it already, they watch it again. You know, but I just thank God for that. Just the good times we shared. We had a conversation. Uh, he called me uh, maybe about a month or so ago, a month and a half or so ago. And it was like late at night. I said, that's Earl calling. I picked up his phone. He, and he, when he called me, he said, hey, brother-in-law, how you doing? And I said, hey, I'm all right. What's going on, Earl? He said, listen, I want you to, I just had a thought. I want you to uh, look up uh, a cruise for me because I want to take Lavinia on a cruise. I said, well, when do you want to go? He said, I want to go sometime in late April, maybe early May. You know, Earl had a plan, but God had a, a greater plan for him. And God knew, you know, he, after he had gone through all he had gone through in this walk of life, in his body, he, he told him to take, it's time for you to take your rest and come on home. Amen. And this is the way in walk of life. We're going to all have to one day go unless Jesus come back and crack the sky first. Amen. You leaving here. No matter how much money you got, no matter who you know, no matter who you affiliated with, one day, some way, somehow, you're leaving here. And the most important uh, thing we need to remember and understand that it is the way that we're going to leave here. Amen. I thank God that a uh, long time ago, David Earl Gillespie accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into his life as his personal Savior. Amen. And the word of God declares that we're going to be reunited again. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and only the dead in Christ. Amen. Amen. So if you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, now is the acceptable hour. This is the day of salvation, that you have the opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Amen. We love you to life. Amen. We're here. Family, I'm here. I'm, I'm your brother-in-law, Esteveen. I ain't going nowhere. And I was talking to Denise even on last night. I said, you know what? We're going to take that cruise. We're going to take our grandchildren, and we're going to take her grandchildren. And some way, somehow, we're going to make that happen. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. God bless you. Condolences to the Gillespie's. I know the other ladies, they, you know, the women, they changed their name to something else. But my condolences. That's my brother-in-law right there. He's a good man. Yes, he is. He's still a good man. Yes, like you said, he's come over and watch the heat of the night. I go in there in the kitchen, make a snack. And you know, by, by the time I come back, by the minute, he done solved the crime. I'm like, what? We got to watch something else. I know it was a couple of times way back, I recall, when he was married to my sister Levine. And it was somebody else. I think his name was Lenny. I don't know his last name. But anyway, crooked nose, whatever. So he thought he was going to talk to my sister. Earl say, uh-uh. We was outside. He said, uh, come here. I got to talk to you couple of words. Went over there and talked to him, and he said, lose her phone number, lose her address. Hey, this is my wife. He was strong like that. He didn't scare He wasn't afraid of anything. That boy, he, he didn't even look back. He was running so fast, going down the street. I know, but I'm going to miss Earl. Yes, I am. Yeah, that was my brother-in-law, but it was my brother also. God bless each and every one.
behalf of the Vulcan Pioneers of New Jersey, International Association of Black Professional Firefighters, the City of Newark, uh, Public Safety Director Fritz Frage, Assistant Public Safety Director Rufus L. Jackson, um, Fire Chief Del Ortiz, Honorable Mayor Rajay Baraka, I'd like to send my uh, sincere condolences to the family and thank Brother Earl for his uh, 25 years of service to the Newark Fire Department. <clears throat> I didn't know Brother Earl much. I did, uh, he came on about, I mean, he retired about three years uh, when I came on. Um, but what I do remember of the brother was, he was a God-fearing man, he was a fair brother, a good brother, and may God bless his soul. And my deep, deepest condolences to the family, friends, and everyone who knew the brother. Thank you. Shorter, sorry about that. Gotta adjust it for the brothers. Good morning, everybody. Just give me a second, get myself together. <sighs> Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the animation of the Lord. If you read that text, the whole chapter six and the verse, the beginning verse says, honor thy mother and thy father. My uncle was a great man. Like you said, like you said he had a past. I didn't know that past because by the time I was born, <laughs> he was a good man. <laughs> so all I can speak on is what I know. Uh, most kids uh, growing up, they had to go on field trips to go to the firehouse. I was lucky enough when I was five, six, seven, just go whenever, because he would take me. Hey, we're just gonna take a ride real quick, go up to the firehouse, show me the fire trucks, crack a few jokes with the guys, get back in the car, go do a carpet job, come back home. Aunt Levine, I made a sandwich. Uh, I forgot the dog's name, but if it, if it was really a lion, he wasn't a dog. So I had to give him some chips whenever I had a sandwich. But all I have to say is my uncle was a great man and um, he was a father figure outside of being a father to his children. He was a community man. He was a man of God. Um, I hope I made him proud with that verse right there because he's probably going to laugh um, real quick because it's two minutes. Uh, one of the stories he told me when I was younger and uh, it was me, him, and my father sitting on the porch. He said, I never forget, you know, don't be like your father. And I'm like, what you talking about? Like, a good dude. He's like, yeah, but he a, he a sneak, you know what I mean? He, he's sneaky. You got to watch him. He's sneaky. And I'm like, what you talking about, man? He's like, yeah, man. He's like, when we was younger, you know, man, we sitting at the table one morning. It's me, him, and your grandfather. And there was somebody else at the table. I can't remember right now. They was playing cards. Now, why y'all playing cards 15 and 19 with your father in the morning? Uh, it's a lot going on there. They playing cards. And my grandfather, my father's killing them. He went in every hand he went in. They bet quarters, probably dollars, I don't know. But all of a sudden, my uncle looks down at my father's chair and said, that boy got them cars under his butt. And my grandfather jumped up, almost flipped that table over. And my father ran out the house. And my uncle laughed so hard. And they sit there, they're telling the story. My father's just sitting there looking at him like, why, why are you telling my son this? He said, I just want him to know the type of man you are. Well, you was, I should say. But my uncle was definitely a man of, joy and laughter and um, on this day we're going to celebrate him and every day after we will celebrate him and uh, thank everybody for coming and uh, thank you good morning everyone Thank you all for coming out, because I know you could be somewhere else now. Um, I appreciate um, Newark Firemen for coming, representing the city of Newark. Um, thank the church.
for letting him have his funeral here because I don't think he'd have it any other way. Thank you, Pastor Williams. Um, my Uncle Earl, wow. Two minutes is, is not enough for this man. He was um, like a magnificent person. Um, my cousin even said he was like Superman to me. You know, I, um, I worshiped like the ground he worked on. You know, out of all my uncles, they said, why Uncle Earl? I said he was strong, he was smart, he was handsome. You know, he can handle himself on the streets, and this is the person I want to be like. He's very athletic. You know, he used to come get me when I was a kid and take us to the football game. Um, my uncles played. That was the whole team, basically, you know, and a couple of friends. But, um, you know, and he would show me the ropes, you know. He was very athletic. He, he had hands. He was going to become a professional boxer, but I'm glad he changed that. Uh, we had a conversation about that. I said, you like getting beat in the head? He's like, nah. I said, I ain't think so. <laughs> But, um, you know, we had a lot of good times together. He was um, a godly man. I mean, wow. Um, before he got saved, he was in those streets hard. He was in those streets hard. And he changed on me, like, overnight. And I was a little disappointed. And, um, you know, people was looking for him, all kind of stuff. And I ran into him. I said, where you been? I said, everybody looking for you. He said, listen, man, I owe people money, people after me, all kind of crazy stuff. And I'm like, how did this happen? I said, I looked up to you. You know, you always had a good job. You took care of your family. Like, what happened? So I said, you know, what was on my heart? I, I said, man, you, you, you got to do something, man. You, you, you got to clean yourself up, do something better. He said, well, I was thinking about that. He said, I just want to take a shower and I'm going to turn myself in. He said, I got warrants. I was like, man, warrants? He's like, yeah, I got warrants. So I don't know if he called my mother or Aunt Barbaran. He said, I'm going to go there, take a shower, and I'm going to turn myself in. So I didn't see him for a couple of days, so I guess he decided to um, turn himself in. But he said this particular morning, he was like at his wits. You know, he said he was even thinking about killing himself. It was so bad. And he said, but a beam of light hit him. I said, a beam of light? He said, yeah. And a voice told me, follow the light. I'm looking at him. He said, I'm not crazy. He said, I'm telling you, I heard a voice. He said, follow the light. He said, I followed this light, and it led me to this church. And he said, before I could do anything, the church door opened, and it was the pastor of the church. And he said, can I help you? And so Earl said, he, you know, just started talking to the pastor. The pastor told him to come in, and that day he got saved. And that was the best thing that ever could have happened to him. And, you know, he, he never looked back from that day on. And I was, you know, so proud of him. He was showing me, like, how God is so good. And he said, listen to this, Greg. He said, now, I just got saved, right? I said, yeah. He said, now, I took the civil service test. He said, I don't even know why I took it. He said, but they contacted me, and they said, you still want to become a fireman? And he was like, fireman? I ain't never take no test for the fire. And he said, yeah, you took the test maybe 10 years ago. And he said, I took a test for the police officer. And they said, no, you can't be a police officer. He said, why? He said, remember you took a psych test, right? He said, yeah. He said, well, after that psych test, we can't give you no gun. He said, why not? They said, you'll kill everybody in New York. That was my uncle. So he said, well, okay, I'll become a fireman. So that was step one. So now he was staying on Prince Street, and it was getting bad around there. So he told me what he used to do. He would call the police, said it was a shooting. He said, this is how he would get in the house because they would jam the elevators and the only way to get up was run up the steps. And you know, all kind of business. They selling drugs, they robbing people. So he said this one particular day, he was just tired and mad. He said, you know, I'm tired of these guys. So he went up the steps. So a, co um, a classmate of mine, he used to be out there, you know, doing his dirt, selling drugs or whatever. He told me, he said, your uncle saved my life. And I was like, how is that? He said, well, you know, I used to do my dirt or whatever. He said, these two guys is about to rob me. So he said, here's your uncle running up the steps. He said, both of them had guns sticking. He said, so I'm thinking your uncle going to run the other way, mind his business. He said, your uncle came in, boop, boop, knocked the guns out and kept running up the steps. I said, what? When he seen Earl, he hugged Earl so hard. I'm like, he said, this is your uncle? I said, yeah, that's my uncle. He said, this is the guy that saved my life. So Junior, you're right. He is a superhero. He is a superhero. And I asked Earl, I said, Earl. What was on your mind? He said, listen, this day I was just so mad and fed up with this strat. I said, see, you need to get out the project. Please get my family out the projects. So what happened was 
he came to firemen. He said at that time, the city of Newark was giving the firemen $10,000 to keep them in the city of Newark. So that 10000 he put on his house. But then he also said, look how God, uh, good God is. He said, Lavinia aunt wrote us a check for $10,000. She said, oh, I didn't give y'all nothing for y'all wedding. I said, what? He said, yeah. So that's how I was able to furnish my house. He said, ain't God good? I said, he sure is. You know, so it's like, not only did he tell me, but he was showing me how good God was. All the things he was blessed him with. And he would always tell me, he's like, Greg, you know, something that resonated. He said, you, you done did everything, basically, right? He said, I know you run the streets, but not like me. He said, won't you try God? He said, won't you try God? And I thought about it. I said, he's right. And I tell people that all the time. I said, you, you don't try everything else. Try God and see how wonderful God will bless you. stories about my father, man. Bear with me. Well, as y'all know, he was um, a carpenter first before a firefighter. And um, he used to take me out with him every time. Like, I was like five years old, starting me off small, picking up straps, do this, do that, whatever. So anyway, um, we just live on 212 Front Street, 11F. So as you know, we coming in, it's about 9, 10 o'clock at night. Two box weighs about like 40, 50 pounds he's carrying, and I have a small um, tool gun that weighs about six or seven, eight pounds. So we get on the elevator, and um, we had shots going off. So the elevator stopped, and it was like on the sixth or seventh floor, I believe. And so my father said, stand back, get behind me. So as the elevator doors open, up, a guy comes running, the, try, trying to run in the elevator with a shotgun. My father grabbed that gun, pushed him out the way, and me and him got, got off the elevator and ran up the stairs. That's, he, he didn't fear nothing. My father was, whew. <laughs> I'm just, I just heard, heard a lot of stories about him and seen him in action a couple of times, and this is the last story. Me, Rushan, and my father had a job to do it on Pacific. And um, it, was a, it, was a big, it was a big house. And um, this one Pacific room, which was the master bedroom, he told me, um, look, David, put the scene back in the back. That's how I got laid out. So I'm like, all right. So, you know, Rushan, and remind you, it was a Friday. So, we wanted to hurry up and get the job done, so we laid the carpet down as soon as he left. So we shot like, yeah, Junior, come on. You know you do scenes real good. So um, just put the scene right here, because it's shorter. So I said, no, I don't think so, because he got a check. He so we shot, he uh, suit me up like, come on, cuz, you know you can do it. You can hide scenes all the time. All right, so we did it. The job came out perfect. So we called him, dear dad, we finished. He came up, started inspecting everything, whatever. So. He like, all right, pack it up, let's go. So we go home and get paid, whatever. So me and Rushan, we like, did our thing on Friday, party, whatever. So a couple of days later, I get a phone call. Broom, broom. Yeah, Junior, what's up? Where you at? I'm in the house. Um, come down, I need to talk to you. Oh, God, okay, Dad. Gets there. Like, yeah, so um, where you put that scene at? I said, what? At the um, proximity, he's like, yeah. I said, I put it where you um, told me to. Oh, yeah. He's like, no, you didn't. I was like, oh, shoot, how did you know? But I didn't say that, I said it in my mind. Like, how, did, how do you know that? He's like, yeah, the lady called and said that um, when the guys put him back the front, you, they dragged it across the floor and it ripped. But it ripped where the scene was at. And I said, where was the scene was at, man? 
It was like in front of the doorway. No, I told my son to put that same in the back. So he's like, yeah, you and Rashawn, y'all gotta go up there and do the, um, see if you can see if y'all can fix it. If not, you gotta do the job over. So I guess up there, me and Rashawn, he's sad, well, mad rather, right? because he don't want to get the money taken away from him. Me as well. So make a long story short, we had to do the whole job over. So he took one, and y'all know my father. He made it perfectly clear. He said, now see, if you would have did it the right way the first time, like I told you to, you wouldn't have to go through this. That's like in life, son. If you do something the right way the first time, don't take the, the short path, the easiest path. Do it the right way. You don't have to worry about it no more. Because that's how God works too as well. You can't do it your way. When God says, do it my way, and you do it your way, you got to fail every single time. And I take that, and I'm going to live that in my heart for him. I'm going to miss him so much. Thank you. Once again, to the family and friends, a retired firefighter, David Earl Gillespie. On behalf of the Newark Fire Department, the Department of Public Safety, the City of Newark, and the Vulcan Pioneers of New Jersey, we would like to express our deepest sympathy and condolences again for yours and our loss. We would also like to thank you for allowing Firefighter Gillespie to be a part of our family and serving the community, his community of Newark with his bravery and commitment for not only 25 years, but for his life. And we thank him for his service, and we, he will definitely be missed. And respectfully, we mourn with you. Good morning. My name is Italian Chief Sylvester Lee, retired. I worked with Dave on the first tour for most of our career. And every time I would see him, he would have that smile. Department notice. 017 to members, officers of the North Fire Division regarding the death of firefighter Dave E. Gillespie. The following is to be brought to the attention of all officers and members of the North Fire Department. It is with deep regret that we announce the passing of Fire Division member Dave Gillespie, who passed away on March 25, 2024. Firefighter Gillespie was appointed to the North Fire Department in April. Of April, I'm sorry, August 11th of 1989 and retired September 1st, 2014. His first assignment was the training division. From the training division, he went to Engine 8, which is located down next. Then from Engine 8, he went to Engine 21, which is located in Felsburg. On May the 7th of 2023, he was temporarily assigned to the first tour, Engine 5 and also as a department messenger. Uh, he, he remained at Engine 5 until his retirement. I'd like to share a real small story with you guys. I knew Dave before we came from the fire department. We came from a very rough area. Frog, his brother, and I know each other a little bit more because he was more my age. And we was two kids that came from that area that did good. And I, we often laugh about it when we see each other because we both came from that Littleton Avenue, 18th Avenue, Springfield Avenue, 16th Avenue area, and we roamed it in the 70s. And, and anyone that knew the 70s knew how rough it was. And when they asked me to come up to say this, I was more than honored because he always was a gentleman. Good morning, everyone. I also want to say something about Dave because um, I remember Dave as a man of God, not just a co-worker, but I remember him as a man of God. 
first and foremost. I remember one time I called him. I had a problem with my home. I owned a home on Avon Avenue. He came by. And this thing just stuck with me for all the years that I've known him. And even the time after the time that he retired, I remember this day and this particular incident. So I called him and I said to him, I needed some something looked at at my home. So he came by, he looked at, looked at it for me. He said, Bird, well, you know, it's not that bad, but you know, I can fix this for you, no problem. And so um, we were on our way outside of my home, walking down the street. Everybody know how Avon Avenue is. You know, you're gonna get a, you know, a crackhead or two walking by, something like that sometimes. And so this, partic this particular day, this lady walked by and she was in a really bad state. She needed God. She needed Jesus. She needed someone to touch her. And when she walked by, she looked at us and she said, I just need somebody to pray for me. And do you know at that particular time, Dave stopped what he's doing. He dropped all his tools on the ground. And he held that lady's hand and he began to pray for her. So let me say to you that, let me say to you, family, I know you're grieving today. But I want to tell you that you had a man of God. I want, you, I want to let you know that he, right now, he's sitting on the right hand of Jesus. So you, you can be sad for a little bit. But I want to let you know what you had here. You had an angel walking here on earth. And so I always remember that day because, you know, sometimes people get too pumped up in, in, in circumstance and think they're too good to, to pray and talk to and, and pray, lay hands on someone else in the street. But Dave was not too proud. And as you saw him at home, I will guarantee you that's how we saw him at work. Like, the, like Chief said, he always had a smile on his face. He always had a reverence for God. So we bless you on today for having a man like this in your life. And I thank God for him. So I want to say, as you're grieving, we're grieving with you because we know we lost our, our angels on today. But you don't have to grieve too hard because we know he's sitting in the right hand of Jesus. for those wonderful reflections on today. Uh, we're coming uh, near the part where we will hear the word of the Lord. Uh, but before we uh, come to that portion of the service, we will have our acknowledgement and the reading of the obituary by evangelist Edna Murphy. And then we will hear the Samana selection from the Wells Cathedral Praise Team. And followed by the Praise Team, we will hear from uh, someone who Elder Gillespie dearly loved, and that is our pastor, uh, the pastor of Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ, Pastor James N. Williams Sr. We thank God for our pastor on this morning. Would you give our pastor, amen, a good hand on this morning, amen. And also to our First Lady, First Lady Shonda Williams, amen. Uh, we truly love Elder Gillespie, is that it right? I thought I'd hear a better amen from Wells Cathedral, amen. And we surely we know that Elder Gillespie uh, loved his church family. Let's receive Evangelist Murphy uh, at this time and then the praise team will come. And then we will hear what thus said the Lord through our pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. The condolences are many, and I'm sure the family will acknowledge them at a later date. I do have two cards and several resolutions I'm only going to read two of the resolutions and acknowledge the others. With sympathy, love and prayers always, Mother's Board of Wells Cathedral, Mother Wiggins and Aaliyah, Pastor James N. Williams, Sr. For this card, I'm asking all of our missionary sisters to please stand. All of the missionary sisters and this is to you, uh, Sister Gillespie. She's our sister. It says, we believe in our heart of hearts that ex extra love and grace are being sent to you. 
We believe that your husband's presence will be there to support you through the years to come in ways you cannot yet know. And we believe in you, your amazing, loving heart will find a way to carry on and to smile again. This is from your missionary sisters, and we want you to know that we're here to support you. Call on us at any time. Thank you. Resolution Shiloh Temple Church of God in Christ Jesus Incorporated. Resolution Dr. James Shaw Pastor. We present this resolution to the family on this day, April 4th, 2024, and a copy of this resolution will be maintained in our church records. Juanita Ray, church secretary, Pastor James Shaw, and the entire Shiloh Temple Church family. Church resolution of respect for Elder David Gillespie, Humbly submitted on this fourth day of April 2024, the officers and members of the Rima Word Fellowship Church of God in Christ, Houston, Texas, Reverend Sidney W. Hammond, Senior Pastor, Lady Valerie L. Hammond, First Lady, and this comes from uh, Superintendent Hammond. Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ Sunday School Department Resolution of Respect for Elder David Gillespie. Though your days among us were too brief, we draw comfort from the knowledge that there is no darkness or pain can touch you now. Whereas the passing of Elder David Gillespie does not diminish the profound benediction of a life lived in such godly service nor our admiration of and affection for our beloved brother. Whereas in the service as Sunday School Men's Superintendent, he shared with us a bright, steady spirit and cheerful heart. Whereas our beloved Elder David Gillespie embraced the all-forgiving presence of God from his earliest day and strove to exhibit these same qualities of compassion throughout his life. Whereas the Sunday School Department and acquaintances of Elder David Gillespie are deeply saddened at his departure, as are all who were touched by his generous spirit and kindness. Whereas his love for Sunday School and people of God will never be forget, forgotten, be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy kept in the church archives and the Sunday School Department. To the family, we know your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow, but more importantly, we recognize that this loss is heaven's gain. Humbly submit, submitted on the fourth day of April, 2024, the officers and members of the Sunday School Department at Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ, Reverend James Williams, Senior Pastor, Lady Shunda Williams, First Lady, Dr. Francis E. Billups, Sunday School Superintendent. Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ, 672 Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, Elder James and Williams, Senior Pastor, Resolution. April 4th, 2024, we, the Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ family, have suffered a deep loss in the home going of our beloved Elder David Earl Gillespie, an ever faithful and dependable member devoted to serving God. Whereas in the providence of God, he has brought to a close the life of your loved one and our dear brother, the pastor, officers, and members of Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ feel that it is befitting to express sympathy to the entire Gillespie family. Elder Gillespie will be remembered as a loving husband, 
to our dear sister evangelist Lavinia Gillespie and her father to his children. Whereas Elder Gillespie's dedication to the church and most of all to God has been a source of his being since accepting Jesus Christ as his personal savior. We acknowledge the work he did when he was physically able to serve in the church as the president of the Home and Foreign Mission, as the assistant superintendent of the Sunday School, and as a devoted member of the Elders and Ministers Council. He truly epitomizes the scripture that reads, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. St. John 9, 4a. He worked diligently without complaining under the late Bishop Hersey L. Taylor and presently under Pastor James N. Williams, Sr. Whereas a person's worth is measured by their determination to be a servant of God, Elder Gillespie was often found working closely with his pastor and always ready to be of assistance or help to him. Wells Cathedral has lost a beautiful saint, but God has promised in his word, I will not leave you, leave you comfortless. I will come to you. John 14 and 18, God has always kept his promises and we are encouraging the bereaved family to lean upon him. He will guide you all the way. Be it resolved that Elder David Earl Gillespie's legacy become, be, become a permanent record in the archives of this church. Evangelist Gillespie, your church family is here for you to lean on. May God grant you strength for each day and remember to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Lovingly submitted, Pastor James N. Williams, Sr. and Wells Cathedral Church of God in Christ. The obituary. Elder David Earl Gillespie was born on November 11, 1955 in Newark, New Jersey to the late Thurman T. Gillespie and Chris, Christia Bell Gillespie. Elder Gillespie was the eighth child of 15 siblings. He was educated in the Newark school system and graduated from Barringer High School. He valiantly served in the National Guard. He also took an interest in carpentry and had his own company, F&L Carpet. Elder Gillespie served the city of Newark as a fireman from 1989 until he retired. He also was an active member of Vulcan Pioneers for many years. Elder Gillespie met and married his beloved wife, Evangelist Lavinia. They were married for 16 loving years. I'm sorry, not 16, the children would be too young. <laughs> they were married for 46 loving years. Elder Gillespie turned his life over to God and dedicated his life to the Lord. He was an ordained minister at Wells Cathedral Church as well as a contributing member who served his community by feeding the homeless, missionary work, transportation for the church, and prayer ministry. Elder Gillespie was also assistant superintendent of the Sunday School. Elder Gillespie's hobbies were studying the Bible, praying, football, chess, youth basketball league, enjoying a good meal and cooking. He was known as a jokester, 
among his friends and family. His laugh was loud and infectious. Elder David Gillespie leaves behind to cherish his memory. His beloved wife, Evangelist Lavinia Gillespie's sons, Terry Hauser, David Gillespie Jr., daughters, Taisha Hauser, Sherelle Virtual, four brothers, John Gillespie, Robert Gillespie, Michael Gillespie, sisters Barbara Blue, Christine Rivers, Carolyn Hunter, and Susan Gillespie, sisters-in-law, Daphne Gillespie, Denise Shaw, brothers-in-law, Frager Talbert, grandchildren, Kwamir, Keyshawn, Parker, Nyla, Maya, Janasia, Nizia, Serena, Tyler, David III, Zahir, great-grandchildren, Kaiser and Kayad, and a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, relatives, friends, and his Wells Cathedral Church family. Elder Gillespie was preceded in death by Lily Gillespie, Thurman Gillespie, William Gillespie, Yusef Alim, Hakeem Alim, Rose Marie Gillespie, Larry Gillespie, Joseph Blue Jr., Kevin McGriff, Taisha Gillespie. Elder Gillespie's time among us will be deeply missed, yet we find solace in knowing that his spirit rests with the Lord. God bless you.
Amen. If there's anyone in the house that can testify that you trust the Lord, can we just give him a phrase right now if he's worthy? Come on, if you really trust God in everything that you do, he's worthy of the praise and he's worthy of the glory. Amen and amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you once again for your goodness and your mercy. You've blessed us, God, given us another day of brand new mercy that we've never seen before. And God, we come even now just to say a word to this family and friends that are gathered here today. As I stand behind this sacred desk, oh God, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins, known and unknown. Wash me again. And I may be worthy to stand before you and before your people on today. Bless your word. We pray that it will fall on good ground that we may grow thereby. We pray for salvation and healing through the power of your word. And we'll give your name praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. One more time, put your hands together for Jesus. You may have your seats. Amen. In the presence of the Lord. We do honor God today. Amen. Who's the head of my life too? All the pastors and elders that are gathered here today, thank God for each of you, family and friends, and to uh, this dear family, the Gillespie family. Uh, I don't have a long message, so you can relax. Uh, but I do want to say a few words about someone who I considered a friend. Uh, but first of all, to this wife, I think, she's, I think she deserves a standing ovation for the care, come on, and the love and the concern and the compassion that she showed towards her husband. Amen. Amen. Sister Gillespie, you are so special. And, um, oh, I tell you, Elder Gillespie sure depended on you. He will call you all the way across the room. Could you get that for me? Sister Gillespie would say, Dave, you couldn't get that? Yeah, but I want you to get it, Lou. But you serve with such dignity. You show uh, love uh, in sickness and in health. And we applaud you on today. We hold you up in prayer, amen. Certainly to Dave, you and your wife and your family, Sister Sherelle, you and your husband, your family. Um, I'm grateful that you all allowed us to share your father. Uh, just two quick stories that come to mind. Uh, I remember years ago, we were on a marriage retreat. And at that time, uh, Bishop Taylor said, well, we're going to go around. Anybody have any questions or concerns? And I remember Evangelist Gillespie somewhat reluctantly, she said, she said, I want to ask a question. I, I, I hope it's not out of, out of order. She said, what do you do when you keep finding toe crumbs around? <laughs> And Elder Gillespie looked at Sister Gillespie and said, Lou, she said, I just want to know. <laughs> just want to know what do you do? I never forgot that. That was so funny. The last one was, you know, Elder Gillespie and I shared many things. I was also a fireman in Elizabeth, and I retired from the fire department. And so we was able to share many stories together. And we're both relatively short, light-skinned. When I first met Elder Gillespie, we both had a little bit of hair. And um, I remember when, you know, I succumbed, amen, and I, I cut my hair off, and Elder Gillespie was holding on for dear life. And I remember we were sitting in the bishop office one Sunday, and I said, I said, Elder, man, it's time to let it go, man, let it go. And he said, I don't, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to hold on for a little while longer. I said, no. I said, man, talk to your wife, man. Please, please let it go. So on the lady, he got rid of it. He said, 
it's not bad, it's not bad. So we share many laughs together and we also share our faith. Uh, one thing about Elder Gillespie, he was an honest man. Uh, we believed in serving the Lord wherever we were uh, outside of the church. Uh, we were able to uh, show Christ in the parking lot at the store. Uh, he was truly a man of God and we're going to miss him but I want to say to the family um, follow his footsteps uh, Dave he set an example for you uh, and I believe he believed in you yeah he believed in you uh, follow his footsteps because I believe that's gonna that's gonna lead you down the right path amen going to come through to you from the word of the Lord from the book of 2 Timothy. Thank God for our supervisor. Amen. And uh, my wife on today to each of you. We're so grateful. Uh, 2 Timothy shares with us uh, some words that uh, bring to mind where I can uh, think about Elder David Gillespie in a very vivid way. Uh, this epistle from Paul to his son in the gospel, Timothy. Uh, he was giving him some instructions before he was getting ready to, to leave. To think about Elder Gillespie, I think about how, as it was already forestated, he was a man, he, he was a praiser. Uh, yeah, I can remember many, many, many Sundays, Elder Gillespie would skip across this pulpit. He would run around the church, and it was it was it was it was good to see because you know he lived it. It's nothing worse than seeing somebody run around the church who you know, okay. But Elder Gillespie lived the life that he exemplified. Paul says in this epistle in the fourth chapter, talks about uh, what you should do in order uh, to make it in to the kingdom. And I think about Elder Gillespie, the last few times I spoke with him, uh, it was amazing. I never heard him complain. Even when he came in the last time he was here, I saw he was sitting over there and uh, in his eyes, you can almost see he, he really wished he could get up and just jump, run, and skip. But his hands would go up. He still had his testimony that even in his condition, that God was good. And so I just want to reflect on the fact that uh, he did it all the way to the end. I want to let you know that he finished strong. And so on this morning here in this particular text, uh, Paul says to Timothy, he says, I want you to watch in all things. He said, I want you to endure afflictions. Oh, that's easier said than done because many times when our body is afflicted, uh, many times we pull back. Many times when uh, our legs and uh, arms don't work like they used to, many times we pull back. But well, one thing I can say about Elder Gillespie, I believe he took this to heart. He, he was able to endure afflictions. He was able to endure because uh, he didn't stop serving God uh, when his foot got bad. He, he didn't stop serving God when he couldn't run around the church. He did not serving God, uh, stop serving God when he could not come like he used to. He endured afflictions. And then Paul says, he says, do the work of an evangelist. Listen to the testimony of how uh, Elder Gillespie was able to stop on a dime and just pray for a perfectly complete stranger. Uh, he had no problems praying for you. He, he did not just do it in the church, but wherever he went, he was able to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. He did the work of an evangelist. He fed those who were hungry. Uh, he went up foreign. He did it on the foreign and he did it locally. He did not mind giving of his body, his finances and his time he did the work of an evangelist then the third thing he says well he said make full proof of your ministry 
Uh, the full proof of his ministry was he was able to bring somebody else into the body of Christ. Uh, many times we would be out there on the sidewalk and uh, whoever would walk past, he would just say, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? Do you know who Jesus is? Well, won't you let us, let me introduce you to Jesus. He was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter whether it was Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, he made full proof of his ministry ministry but then there came a time when he couldn't do what he normally would do there came a time when he could not uh, meet me here at the church and have conversations before uh, church service was started there came a time when he could not uh, kick carpet uh, Brother David anymore that there came a time when there was no more rolling out the carpet or picking up There came a time when he couldn't do that anymore And I, I remember the last time I talked to him where he was able to talk back to me I, I could see in his eyes and I could see in his body. He was tired uh, I know uh, he probably knew uh, that it wasn't long, but he never gave up hope that God was going to work a miracle. Here in that particular text, uh, he, he began to say, he said, for now, I, I'm ready to be offered and uh, the time of my departure is at hand. Uh, Sister Gillespie, I wasn't there, but uh, I believe some way, somehow, he probably expressed to you that he was tired in his body. Uh, I, I don't believe that he wanted any more surgeries. Matter of fact, he never liked being in a hospital. He fought it with a passion. If he could have rolled himself out the hospital, he would have. He didn't like to be around the doctors. He didn't want to be around the nurses. He wanted to be home with Lulu. I can't get no help in here. Uh, but, but I believe there came a time when he felt like his time was just about up. Well, I want to tell you on this week, uh, uh, I thought about my dear friend. And when I began to think about him, yeah, there was a sadness, but then there was a joy. Because when I think about how we serve in this same pulpit right here, uh, I believe that if he was here today, I believe he would tell you, I fought a good fight. I believe he would tell you, uh, I ran around the church as long as I could. I believe he would tell you, uh, I shouted as long as I could. I believe he would tell you, I told my family about Jesus as long as I could. I believe he will tell you even on the fire department, I shared Jesus as long as I could. But oh, there came a time when he said, I fought a good fight. I believe he will say, I finished my course. I had a course about hard knocks. I had a course in patience. I had a course in love. I had a course in diligence. And I didn't give up when times got hard. I didn't give up when times got rough. I believe he will tell the family I finished my course. I stayed the test. I didn't give up the fight. And then the last thing I believe he will say is I kept my faith I didn't switch religions I stayed with Jesus all the way to the end I can remember years ago Elder Gillespie had no reservations about telling us his testimony I remember he said yeah I used to smoke crack cocaine but he said but one day Jesus saved me he said I'm not ashamed because God got me off a drug but now I'm serving Jesus he had no reservations about telling you if you serve Jesus he can save your life he can pick you up and turn you around I believe Elder Gillespie will say to the family fight the good fight finish your course and keep the faith Keep on serving God. Keep on serving Jesus. Keep on praising him. Because one day, the Lord himself is going to descend from heaven with a shout, 
with the trump of God. I believe he'll tell the family, if you want to see me again and be in peace, you got to be saved, sanctified, and the Holy Ghost feel. He will tell the family, stop playing around. Come on in the Lord house because the Lord is soon to return. I believe that if Elder Gillespie could run around one more time, he would tell you I'm running for Jesus and I can't stop now. Come on, family. He showed you the way. Come on, family. He walked the walk and he talked the talk. Let's be about Jesus because one day, tell your neighbor one day, one day, one day, one day, one day. I want to be ready when he comes back. Family, friends, uh, you don't have to be a theologian to look around to see that we're in the last days. I want you to understand that serving God is not about who's good. I hate to disappoint you, but there's going to be some good peoples that are not going to make heaven. It's going to be some nice people that's not going to make it in. Because going to heaven is not about who's good or bad. It's not about who's naughty or nice. It's about who believes in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There may be one here today and you don't you don't know who Jesus is. There may be somebody here today that's not ready for his return. The thing that is so marvelous about serving God is he does not require you, watch this now, he does not require you to stop doing anything to come to him. Many times we, when this call to salvation is made, we start thinking about, well, I'm not ready yet because I got to stop this. I'm not ready yet because I just, I got to finish doing this. But believe it or not, you, you don't have to stop doing anything right now. All you have to do is come. Oh my God, you can come with issues. You can come with habits because, come on, let's just be honest. Who gets everything together before they come? to make the appeal to you today wouldn't it be awesome that on the day that we come to celebrate his life someone give their life to Christ it's very easy to do in these next two minutes the Bible says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved because it's with the heart that man believe unto righteousness and it's with the mouth that confession is made unto salvation would you just bow your heads in the sanctuary now and close your eyes I believe there's someone ready to make that decision now your life will never be the same God will lead you into the way you should go if you would just say Lord Jesus Come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. And I'll live for you the rest of my life. Now we believe according to the Bible. You said those words with your mouth. You believe those words in your heart. We believe where you are right now, you are now born again. I want to encourage you to find yourself a good Bible-believing church that's preaching the true, unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. 
so you can be prepared for the imminent return of our Lord and Savior. He's coming, y'all. And the Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. And I said it last week, I'll say it again. Thieves don't ring the doorbell. They don't let you know I'm coming in. And when the Lord comes back, he's coming back in the twinkling of an eye. Now that would, that would frighten people that's not ready, but you're ready now. I want to encourage you to can you continue walking the path that has been laid for you. Family, Evangelist Dave, Sherelle, you all know we're going to be here for you. Uh, this is not just a today thing, but we're going to be here with you, praying with you. Uh, and whatever you need that we can do, all you have to do is call on us. We know that earth has no heart, no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. And we know that sometimes words are inadequate, but we will say this, God will be with you and he will give you what you need during your time of bereavement. Can we give the Lord praise one more time for my dear brother, for the life of David Gillespie. Come on, let's give God praise for his life. A life well lived service well given amen you're in the hands of the morticians I believe they're going to have uh, is the fire department going to do okay outside okay very good going to ask that everyone would stand.